Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Tuesday Office. I'm glad to be with you. I hope your week's off to a wonderful start. This morning, I want to read from Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9. And we're going to talk just a little bit about discipleship. Just to give you a little bit of context, this, uh, this passage comes to us in the context of basically Moses' farewell sermon, or series of farewell sermons, where he's recapitulating everything that happened to Israel in the wilderness in the first generation, all that he had delivered in terms of God's law, and basically saying, this is who you need to be, and this is what you need to do when you go into the promised land. And this is what's going to happen if you fail to live up to that ideal. And in this right here, in Deuteronomy 6, he talks about the greatest commandment, kind of the summary of the whole law. And he talks about how this generation, the older generation of Israelites, entering into the promised land, who is uh, how they're supposed to transmit that faith to the next generations and what that will mean for them. So no more setup. Let's read. Again, Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might." And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates." And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you, with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of all good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant, and when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. And he goes on. I read a little bit past verse 9 because it just felt right. Moses, again, what he's admonishing the people to do is to obey the Lord, to love him, to trust them, to trust him, to follow him, to devote themselves to him with all their heart and all their mind and all their strength. And the thing that I wanted to talk about this morning, and that's really stuck with me, and I've been thinking about a lot, is the discipleship aspect of that. Because in Matthew 28, the, the commission that Jesus gives to his church is basically that we would go and make disciples. Our church, when you look at our bulletin, you see a little mission statement at the bottom there that says the, the people at Village Church of Lincolnshire exist to be and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And it's really easy to think about discipleship in terms of formalities. Uh, you know, Sunday worship, Sunday school, adult Bible fellowship, small group, one-on-one -on -one discipleship meetings, all those kind of things. And, and that's true. Those are an important part of discipleship, and they need to be there in, in the church. They need to be there in a Christian life. But the thing that's really stuck out to me here is what it says in verse 7. It's talking again, again about the commands, and it says, You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And the idea is that discipleship, the, the communication of God's truth, the, the exhortation to, to follow His commands and obey Him, 
all that stuff. It doesn't just happen in dedicated discipleship meetings. It happens in the ordinary warp and woof of life. It happens when you're, you're playing sports together. It happens when you're just out with some buddies. It happens when you're shopping with a friend. It happens when you're at the grocery store and you run into a friend from church. It happens in the ordinary warp and woof of life. I've been thinking especially about this as a father, because when you've got little kids, your life is full of teaching moments. Usually those teaching moments are interrupted by somebody screaming or the kid you're trying to teach getting distracted by a butterfly, but we'll leave that aside for now. Life is full of teaching moments. Discipleship doesn't just happen in, at the breakfast table or during Bible story or family worship. It happens you know, in the midst of a fight between brother and sister. It happens when your kid loses a game and they're upset about it and they don't know how to handle it. It happens when your daughter is disappointed and she feels left out. It happens when one of your kids can't get it together. All these kind of things. Life is full of teaching moments. But even though um, I tend to think about that through the lens of fatherhood and having little children, we know it's not limited to that. Because you have people in your life you're walking alongside. And you have these organic moments where you can reach in and you can teach or you can encourage. You can point them to God's truth. So my, cur my encouragement today, my encouragement for this week, is that we would be on the lookout for those discipleship moments. That when we're sitting in our house or we're walking by the way, when we're lying down or when we're rising, all the time, everywhere, that we're looking for opportunities to ask, what does this moment teach me about God? And what can God teach me about this moment? And how can I help either myself or whoever I'm walking alongside recognize in this, in this moment, in this opportunity, what God is trying to do and what God is trying to say and what God is trying to teach? So let's, let's put our antenna up, our discipleship antenna. Let's be more sensitive to those moments and let's trust that God will meet us there. Because that's how God teaches us. That's God, how God instructs us. Not just in the formalities of church discipleship, but in the, the organic realities of the way we walk out our Christian faith every day. So with that said, let's go to prayer. As always, if you have a prayer request, please share in the comments and I'll be glad to pray for you. Father, we thank you that the faith once for all delivered to the saints is not a faith that's limited to holy spaces. Lord, that we don't just have to go to the religious place to do our religious things and participate in some weird activity that has no connection to real life. We thank you that all that you are and all that you ask of us speaks to all that we are and all that we do. We thank you that you are with us in everything, that you long to see us formed in Christ in everything we do. So we ask, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would make us sensitive to the moments in our life where you might be trying to disciple us, or you might be working through us to disciple others. Lord, help us to pay attention. Help us to be bold to speak. Help us to seize teaching moments as opportunities to teach, not just to let them pass by or to steer a conversation to more comfortable waters. Lord, we need courage in this. We need wisdom. We need boldness. We need you to lead us and guide us to help us to do this well. Father, we thank you for the gift of your church, that we have a context in which to do this. And we have brothers and sisters in Christ who've tacitly given one another permission to do this with each other. So, Father, if uh, we find ourselves in a moment this week where someone else is trying to disciple us, I pray that we would receive that. We would receive it as a good gift from you. We would check it, of course, against the word uh, to see if these things are so. But Lord, I do pray we would receive it and we would be encouraged and edified in it. Father, we turn now to specific requests for our church. I think of Beba Donna and her father and Mike and her, her father's... her. Uh, wife, Jean, and the rest of their family, I, I pray that you'd bring them comfort uh, in the passing of Bev's dad. Lord, uh, for all the 
the stuff they need to deal with now. Uh, I just pray that you would be with them in that. It's uh, it's a strange thing to have to deal with logistics, especially during COVID, uh, at, when you're trying to mourn, when you're trying to grieve. So Lord, I pray you'd be gentle with them. And I pray that you would bring comfort and that you would bring pre- uh, peace. Lord, that the, their mourning would turn to gladness as they think of the better times they had with Bev's dad. Lord, we pray for Barb Lindbergh and her mother and her um, her ongoing sickness, Lord. We know you know what she needs. So we pray that you would draw near. We pray that you would bring comfort, that you would be present to her, even in the midst of her confusion. I pray for Barb and Barb's sister, and I pray for Jim, I pray for that family, Lord, that you would help them to, for, to, to persevere in the care of Barb's mom. Lord, uh, we give thanks that Rob is feeling a bit better and that apparently honey is helping to mitigate his cough. Lord, thank you for good gifts like honey. Uh, as someone who suffers from seasonal allergies and has enjoyed honey in helping me with that, thank you for that, Lord. And we do thank you for the opportunity to pray for Rob. We pray that uh, these and other measures would work and that they would help and that the, the symptoms of COVID would subside without any lasting damage. We pray that you would bring healing there and that you would bring hope. Father, there are so many needs that we could be praying for right now, so many people we could lift up to you, and truly the need outpaces our ability to articulate it. So, Father, we lay our church at your feet. We lay its people at your feet. We lay our friends, our family, our co-workers, our neighbors, all of them at your feet. And we trust you. We trust that you are working here, that you are working through us. And we pray that you would intervene on their behalf. And, Lord, we pray, finally, for ourselves this week. Lord, as I preached on Sunday, that We pray that you would restore to us the joy of our salvation. Lord, that we would point people to you constantly, that we would have a holy zeal and desire to share the good news of the gospel with other people. Help us to do that, Lord, especially now when we still feel very disconnected and isolated from uh, the normal people that we see in our lives. Please help us to be creative. Please help us to be bold. And in all we do, May we bring glory to your mighty name through the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, It's a blessing to spend this time with you. Uh, We will be back on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Casey will be with you this time. He is in town. So God bless you all. I pray you have a good week. And I pray that, again, you would be on the lookout for these opportunities to disciple and be discipled. God bless you all.